In today's video, we'll see how simple it is to add Docker Compose support to our application. So currently what we have is we have this image over here for creating a container and running our application. But we're also going to be working against a real database. And for that, what I want us to do is to be able to say Docker Compose up and start both our application and our database. So in today's video, we'll see exactly how to do that and how simple it can be. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Amichai and in this channel, I talk about software architecture, design patterns, things that you want to be familiar with if you're a software engineer. This video is part eight in a series in which we're building a REST API completely from scratch using ASP.NET 8 and following best practices, etc. So if you want to follow along, then make sure to smash the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos as they come out. In any case, this video can be watched standalone from the overall series. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is to create over here a Docker Compose file, and this is a YAML file. And if you're not familiar with Docker Compose, then it's a tool that allows you to run multi-container Docker applications where we'll basically be able to say Docker Compose up and it'll start a few containers instead of us having to manually start these containers. Plus we can also manage networking and storage, etc., in the Docker Compose file. Okay, so let's start by specifying the version. The version that we're going to use is 3.9. Next, let's go ahead and define the services that we're going to have. And we're going to have two services. Number one is the web application. And the second one is the database. This is going to be our ASP.NET web application. And the DB is going to be our Postgres database. Okay, now, first of all, let's go ahead and give each one of the containers a name. So let's go ahead and say container name. And for this, we're going to call this the one review API. And for the database, then we'll simply call this one review DB. Okay, so let's go ahead and define the rest of the properties for our web app. Now, because we aren't using a well-known image from the Docker registry, but instead we want to use our Docker file, then let's go ahead and define over here the build property. And we need to specify what the Docker file is, which in our case is simply Docker file. Now we also want to specify the context where in our case, it's simply this folder that we're in. So we're talking about where is the Docker file contained and it's inside this folder that we're in, which is simply dot. Next, we want to define the ports. So very similar to what we did in the previous video, where we said that we want to map port 5001 in the container to port 5001 on our computer, then we're going to do the same thing over here. So simply map 5001 in the host to 5001 in the container. Lastly, let's also define over here the environment variable that we're working in development. So let's say over here, ASP.NET Core environment equals development. Okay, so what we have currently over here is exactly what we did in the previous video other than we also added this environment variable and we call the container name one review API and not one review YouTube or something like that, what we did in the previous video. Now we should be able, if we comment out both of these to already go ahead and say Docker compose up and run the application. And this should work same thing like before running on port 5001. So if we go ahead and now create a product, then as we see, then this works successfully and our project is successfully running via the Docker Compose tool. Now, real quick, before we continue, I want to remind you that if you want to join our amazing, amazing Discord community, then you can do it for the price of a cup of coffee. Instead of buying your, the next cup of coffee, you should invest in my Patreon. And then not only will you join our Discord server, but also you'll get access to the source code of this video and every other video on this channel. Enough self-promotion, now back to the video. Okay, so let's move on to the database. So the first thing I want to say is that the image that we're using is Postgres and we want to use the latest. So I simply say over here, latest. Next, let's also have over here the ports and same thing, let's map the default 5432 to 5432. And now for the environment variables, then we want to have the following three environment variables. Number one is Postgres. DB, the next one is user, and the last one is password. For now, let's simply say over here, one review, the user is, I don't know, let's say Postgres, and the password is some strong password. Once we have this, then we should be able to say Docker compose up. And if we look at the Docker client, 
then we can take a look at the database and see that we are ready to accept connections. Now, the last thing that I also want to add is alongside the two services that we have, we have the web app and the database. I want the data in the database to be persistent. And so we don't need to re create the products and reviews each time. We just have it persisted across the various sessions. So for this, what I want to do is to say the following alongside the services, let's say over here volumes, and let's define here a named volume called Postgres data. And then we can go back to RDB and define that we have the mapping between the Postgres data and the underlying data in the Docker container where the Postgres database is storing its data. And now that we have this, then we've mapped the data in the Postgres database inside the container to the Postgres volume, which I see I misspelled Postgres volume that we've defined over here in the Docker Compose. Okay, now currently then we aren't really persisting the data because if we look at our products service, then we see we're simply using an, a static in-memory list where we're creating the products. But what we'll do in the upcoming videos is we'll wire everything together and we'll make sure that the data really is persisted across the various sessions. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you want to stay up to date with the videos as they come out, then I'm reminding you again to smash the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.